Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your Cornerstone Community Church Service for, of course, September the 8th. I am so glad that you are joining me today, and I just want to give you an in-person service, uh, invitation, I should say, to our service. It is at Cornerstone Hall. That's number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. Our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. Well, Father, thank you today for the songs that we're going to be singing and as well the Word of God that we're going to be presenting. And we thank you for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, let's start our time off, <clears throat> excuse me, today with great is, your grace is enough. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with a sinner's restless eye. You lead us by still waters into the sea. And nothing can keep us apart. for you today is, of course, one of my favorites. <laughs> my Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of my tears. i 
Well, today we're talking about a very important subject, and that is, of course, the Holy Spirit. So, Father, over the next few moments, as we are together, this is such a powerful teaching and so important in our generation. Because, Lord, we are a wayward generation, and we need stability. We need reliability. We need consistency. And the Holy Spirit is the one who offers that in this unregulated <laughs> and indecisive world. We ask your blessing upon each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've been plowing through the upper room discourse where Jesus has been talking about so many different subjects. Now he comes back to what he had earlier talked about in John chapter 14. He says, now that you guys understand these different important concepts, there is someone that I am sending into your life. In John chapter 15, verse number 26, Jesus again re-emphasizes what he talked about in John chapter 14, verse number 15. He says simply this, when the counselor comes, I love that count. You and I have divine counsel. We have divine guidance. We have divine discernment and inspiration in our lives. And it is in the person of the Holy Spirit. The Greek word here is paraclete, which means someone who comes alongside. Someone who takes your hand and guides you through the pitfalls of life. He is there to help you. He is there to regenerate you. He is there to, of course, allow you to navigate the world in which we live. Folks, we are living in a chaotic and confused world where it almost seems that the urgent and the crisis seem to be the order of the day. So you need someone to guide you through this. It's like an individual who takes you on a tour. You know, like when you go, for example, when we went to the nation of Israel, we had a tour guide whose name was David. And David would take us to different places, and he would explain what was going on in that place. And he was an individual that had the, the responsibility of making sure that we were safe, that we were protected, and it was his responsibility to guide us through the different areas of, of course, Israel at the time. So that's what the Holy Spirit is. You might say he's our tour guide through the uh, life that we live. He comes, of course, he says, he comes whom I send to you from the Father. So who is this individual? He is being sent by the Father through Jesus Christ. Jesus had to leave so that the Holy Spirit could come. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, of course, is the third person of the Godhead. And so they are working in conjunction, in unison, union, and also together to establish your life to become everything that God wants it to be. The beautiful thing about the Holy Spirit is that when he comes into your life, he regenerates you. He allows you to become born again, born of the Spirit, leaving the allegiance and also the power of the enemy and becoming part of the kingdom of God. You have new motivation. You have a new direction. And all of that was happened because the Holy Spirit led you to Christ you accepted Christ, and then he begins a journey of transformation, of regeneration, of reprioritizing your life, and you become day by day as you allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Because remember, he's working in your life. He's regenerating. He is doing everything. Our responsibility is to respond and allow him and to yield to his influence and direction in our lives. That's what it's all about. He comes along. And you know what Jesus says? He is the spirit of truth. Now, this is the second time that Jesus has emphasized that he is the spirit of truth. What he is doing is he is revealing to you both natural 
and supernatural truth. The number one truth that he's bringing in is that you cannot save yourself. You need salvation. You need to abandon this uh, thought of somehow recapturing um, paradise lost. He says, you need to know <clears throat> that your salvation will not come through any of your efforts, through false religion or some idol or some following some man. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. You need to accept the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. You need to do that. And when you do that, you are going to find eternal and abundant life. He is emphasizing what Jesus had said earlier in John 14, 6. He said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the way to truth. He is the truth. And with that comes life. One of the most paradoxical moments of human history is here is Pilate. He's about, of course, to judge Jesus. But in that discussion, he said, what is truth? There he has standing in front of him the embodiment and also as well the personification and the incarnation of truth. Jesus is truth. Isn't that one of the most ironic moments in human history? Jesus is the truth. And the Holy Spirit will always point towards Jesus Christ. And so Jesus is not only the way, he is the truth. And the Spirit of truth is going to glorify Jesus Christ. He's not going to glorify man. He's not going to glorify himself. He is going to glorify and point people to Jesus Christ. And in that process, of course, the Father will be glorified. Now, he goes on to say this. He is, of course, the Spirit of truth. And he will come to the boat. And what's he going to do? He's going to testify of me. If that Spirit that is talking to you is not testifying about Jesus Christ. It is a false spirit. And there are spirits out there. You know, they are, of course, demonic and human entities and also angelic entity. But what will always happen is if this particular spirit speaks about Jesus Christ, testifies about Jesus Christ, testifies about the fact that Jesus came in the flesh, that Jesus Christ is the only way, truth, and life, that Jesus' broken body and shed blood are the elements that bring about this eternal and abundant life. That is, of course, what happened. He will always point to Jesus Christ. He will always point to what Jesus Christ did. He will always glorify and honor and exalt Jesus Christ because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's what he says. He will testify of me. Jesus is, of course, the testimony that we need to get eternal life. That's why we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They testify about Jesus Christ. That's why we have, of course, the book of Acts, which is the story of what happened after Jesus rose from the dead. The early life of the church. And then we have all these wonderful letters written about Jesus Christ from different writers, that being the Apostle Paul, John, Jude, Peter, James, all testifying about Jesus Christ. And who is the author of that? Well, Peter says it was men who were, of course, inspired and carried along by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, of course, the author of the Bible and always testifying about Jesus Christ. That's what he says. And he says, in turn, what you need to do is testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. So Jesus says, young men, I am instructing you to, under the guidance and direction and the carrying along of the Holy Spirit, who is your counselor, your comforter, your guide, your direction, your motivator, your regenerator. He says, you in turn are to testify of me. You're to tell people about me in your world. That's why when Jesus said in, of course, uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse number 29, as after he arrest, he says, guys, remember, you're to go into the world, 
testify of me, make disciples of all men, and if the opportunity comes, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He says, that's why you are here. That's why you were chosen. That's your goal and aim in life. And if we are not doing that, then guess what? We're not fulfilling, of course, the destiny that God has us. And in that way, we're also quenching and grieving the third person of the Godhead. This is who he is. He's the third person of the Godhead. He is a person. He is not a force. He is not some, you know, magic thing that just kind of testified. I mean, we've heard of Star Wars, the force, the Metachlorians. No, that's not who he is. He is, of course, the third person of the Godhead. And he is here. And right now, he is comforting us. He is leading to us to the truth. He is regenerating us. And he is also enabling us to testify about Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is being testified by the Holy Spirit. So, Father, thank you today for these moments that we've had around the Word of God. There are many other things that we could say. But, Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, we pray that, Lord, we would take that which we have seen. We've got a counselor. We've got a counselor, someone who will lead and guide and direct us to help us, Lord, to navigate the world in which we live. We have a spirit of truth. We know the truth, and the truth has set us free. And in turn, Lord, we need to testify as the Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus Christ. That old song, Lord, in my life be glorified. That's what we're praying for today in the name of Jesus. Well, of course, it's that time of the service where we pray for you. You may have a need, physical, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, financial, or family. I want you to know today that, of course, the Lord can meet that need. He is Jehovah Jireh, according to Philippians 4.19. He is your healer, according to Isaiah 53, verse number 5, and 1 Peter 2.24. This is that moment where God is going to marvelously and powerfully and dynamically set you free. So, Lord, today, we thank you for your healing touch. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful way that you are going to touch people's lives. This is the moment of breakthrough. This is the moment of victory. We declare today healing and provision according to your word. And we thank you for it, Lord. We receive it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The splendor of the
God. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me this morning for our service. Now, of course, we do have an in-person service today. It starts at 9, 11 a.m. We meet at Cornerstone Hall. That's number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. Our doors open at 1045. Our service starts at 11 a.m. And today, our music is led by Dan Canole. We would love to have you join us for that service. God bless you. Father, thank you today for this wonderful opportunity. And we thank you, Lord, for the things that have been sung, the word that has been presented, and, of course, the prayers that have been offered. May your blessing be upon each one, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. My name is Robert Dean Steele. Thanks for joining me today.